بس بتنور From Jerusalem, this is Lamia Lachut for InfoLife Television, speaking to Mr. Saab Erakat, the Palestinian chief negotiator in Jericho. Hi, Mr. Erakat. Hi, Lamia. How are you? I'm okay. There is right now a big mess in the Palestinian areas between Fatah and Hamas. The Palestinian salaries haven't been paid for two months. The international community, besides Russia, is not really dispersing money. And Israel said that they would not negotiate with the Palestinian government as long as the Hamas government will not fight terror. What is Abu Mazen going to do? And is he going to replace that government? Can he do that by law? And what are his options? Well, let me, Abu Mazen has an overloaded wagon of complexities. On the one hand, Abu Mazen, uh, you know, in the last elections, Hamas won the elections. But in the basic law, the government is supposed to be the president's government. And Abu Mazen designated Mr. Haniyeh to form a government on the basis of the two-state solution on recognition of Israel, international legality, Arab legality, and the obligations of the Palestinian Authority, and to renounce violence and to opt for a meaningful uh, negotiations. Uh, one should keep in mind that this government is only uh, 40 days old. And Abu Mazen wants to give it the chance, hoping that it will uh, change. And at the same time, when we're urging the government to change and we're doing we're exerting maximum effort in order for them to change and accept Abu Mazen's program, we call upon the international community, especially the Americans, the Europeans, the Japanese, and others, to continue helping the Palestinian people in their budgetary supports and infrastructures because uh, cutting this aid immediately and without giving the government the chance would really mean uh, a human catastrophe on the one hand and uh, it, will not, uh, it will backfire. Uh, the second issue here is the Israeli government. We have a new Israeli government. Abu Mazen last Friday called uh, Prime Minister Olmert, congratulated him and offered him a partnership for peace and security. And they spoke about a meeting, and Mr. Olmert uh, said that when he comes back, this will be determined. But we've seen, you know, his advisors uh, rush to, de to deny that there is a meeting that will take place, and so on, and so on, and so on. I don't know why. You know, the, the, if, if they want to go, if the Israeli government wants to go with the path of unilateralism and dictation and walls, it means that we will not have peace. What, what is needed now is for Mr. Olmert to accept Abu Mazen's offer, and there are some who may ask, How can Mr. Olmert negotiate with Abu Mazen when you have a Hamas government that doesn't recognize Israel? Okay, number one, Abu Mazen is trying to give the government access to the program. But on the other hand, the jurisdiction for the political negotiations with Israel is the jurisdiction of the PLO. And uh, Prime Minister Haniya said two days ago that he will not object, he will not put any obstacles in the face of these negotiations, and he accepted that the negotiations is the jurisdiction of the president. And President Ab Abbas... Abu Mazen said that once an agreement is reached with Israel, we put it down to a national referendum. Apropos the PLO, Hamas also said in the negotiations that you had in Cairo with the Hamas uh, representatives for the Hutna, for whatever the temporary truce between Israel and, and Hamas, that they would like to join the PLO and that they wanted elections. Now, there are a lot of people on the Palestinian side who are saying that that would mean Hamas will win the elections and they will get, uh, you know, like a majority Look, over Lamia, Fatah. Lamia, Hamas got 40% of the votes. We got 52% of the votes. We lost because we had 600 candidates running for these seats. Okay, we welcome Hamas joining the PLO, uh, but the, the Hamas must accept first the PLO as a representative of the, PLO, of the Palestinian people. And Hamas must accept the obligations of the PLO, especially in the agreement signed with Israel and the mutual recognition and so on. You know, the PLO represents all Palestinians, the 10 million of us throughout the world. So this will take a lot of time. And, uh, of course, we are working very, very hard in order to revive and to reactivate the PLO institutions, including elections, when, 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 we, when the preparations are concluded. But one of the main issues here is terror. I mean, right after the elections, there was a terror attack claimed by Islamic Jihad, and Hamas said that they are not going to take any actions against terror. Now, Israel said they will not negotiate unless the government will take actions, and Abu Mazen said he would, you know, fulfill his obligations. How well, can he look, do that? Look, Lamia, we can, if you want to find pretexts and reasons for why not to negotiate, we can find hundreds of reasons. I mean, the Israeli government did not negotiate when Abu Ammar was in office, and they said no partner. And then when Abu Mazen was in office, was elected 16 months ago with 62% majority, they said he's irrelevant, weak, and so on. So, and look, if people want to seek pretexts in order not to resume negotiations, they can find many reasons. But to cut the long story short, I don't think you're doing me a favor or I'm doing you a favor in Israel 
if we accept to come back to a, a meaningful peace process, a meaningful negotiations, because I think final borders or end of claims or end of conflict will not be achieved through unilateral steps and dictations. It needs negotiations. It needs a full partnership. We offer our hands to the Israeli government. And for God's sakes, what do they have to lose? What do they have to lose? If we prove you know, uh, to our world that we can deliver on issues like all permanent status issues, including Jerusalem settlement borders and refugees and reach a permanent status uh, historic agreement, then we can go to a national referendum and Israel is a winner. And if we prove that we cannot deliver, then they can go with their unilateral steps later on. But now in the short term, I mean, you do have a problem. You don't have money. No salaries have been paid. Hamas is in power. What is Abu Mazen going to do? Can he ask Ismail Haniyeh to leave and replace him with somebody else? He needs to give him the chance. And that's why we urge the international community and the donor countries to give us the aid needed and to give this government the chance. And, you know, that Abu Mazen is exerting maximum effort on, on them to change. Now let's see. Let's give them the chance and let's see whether they're going to come forward or not. Now, what kind of pressure are you talking about to change? Is he asking them to take measures to... He's asking them to accept his program on the two-state solution, recognition of Israel, renouncing violence, and accept the Palestinian Authority's obligation. And what is he going to do if they don't? There are many, many options that we can deal with that we don't want to talk about now. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.